Hello and welcome back to the building of the Ben Buckle Falcon. To my surprise, I've realised that the end point of this build is fast approaching. And while doing some work yesterday, and I've come to the realisation that this might be ready for a maiden in a few days' time. So what have I been doing? Well, you might be able to see from the sheen on the model that it's been fuel proofed. Well, fuel resistant because no company will commit to saying that their product will totally prevent any damage to buy fuel. And what I've used is this product from Deluxe, which is called AeroCoat. Um, it's a two pack epoxy finish. Uh, I don't really trust the single spray uh, applications. And in this, on this occasion, as you can see from the sheen, I didn't add the matting agent which I used in the build of the SE5. If you want to see more on how I use this product, um, look back at that video and you'll see uh, how I applied it. And I got a nice um, satin sheen. It all depends on how much matting agent you add to it. So that's the product. It gives a really tough finish, totally dries within 24 hours. In fact, the amount of um, catalysts that tell you to add, if you add that, it goes off in my view too quickly. And you can thin it down with cellulose thinners and you can spray it. Although on this occasion, I've simply brushed it on with a brush. And I think for a vintage model like this, that's fine. But if you did want an absolute glass finish, you could achieve it with that product, I'm sure. Once that had been done and the wings have also been done, I finished installing the radio gear. So the receiver is going to be there visible when you can see when it lights up the switch is installed now the um, throttle servo is in place the battery at this moment in time uh, is yet to be finalized i'll use i'll use that as the fine tuning for the cg point the cg point is actually 123 millimeters from here which brings it out actually just in line with the rear window there. And I'm not very far off that, and I'm sure that I'll be able to achieve it by fine adjustment of that battery pack. The engine isn't actually bolted in yet, it's just sitting in, in position. And you'll see that I've added a silicon tube to the exhaust, and this isn't obviously tightened up or trimmed off yet. And I hope that that will also take away any of the gunk from the fuel. But so what's the purpose of the video now? Well, you can see there's a glare and emission, and that is the windows. And I'm going to show you how I'm going to approach putting the windows in, and also what I'm going to use to fix them in. And I've also had some thoughts on whether I'm going to actually shade them out a little. We'll see. So let's get to that now. I'll just set the tripod up and then we'll, uh, we'll be back. So I've said this before and what I'm going to say is this. I'll, I like to tackle the more difficult things first. But otherwise, I always find them a mental block to making progress. And obviously the most difficult part to glaze is going to be this curved area here. The glazing's going on the inside, not on the outside. And I think it's going to produce a very neat finish. But I need to find this shape to match inside. And I'm going to do that by making a paper template. I'm just going to hack out roughly a curve. Very roughly. I think I need to take a little bit more off than that. Notice it's not very precise at this moment. here so let's see right that's roughly the shape and then to get the inside this is what I'm going to do I'm just going to go over this with a pencil And 
and it may you may have to do this more than once to get it and by using the pencil and rubbing on as you would a brass rubbing get round those old English churches I've now got an approximate shape for the window by going along this edge. Now what I'm going to do is I'll fold that over and I'll cut through leaving an overlap all the way around. And if it's this one's wrong, it's only a piece of paper that I've wasted, rather than trying to cut it directly out of the acetate. Okay. That's obviously a weird shape. Put this inside and see where we go. Along there but I can trim that and let's see now you'll notice that Obviously the window becomes very apparent when the white paper's put in. And that's got me to thinking, wouldn't it be nice if I had some shading on the, the glazing so it wasn't totally clear? There you go. Is it right on that side? Yeah, that fits. That wasn't too difficult. I hope you can see how I did it simply by doing a rubbing. And I've done the same thing for one of these windows here. There's the rubbing. Place that inside. You can see I've got the, the actual finished shape. So what I'm going to do is I'll cut these out. I'll continue the process for all the remaining windows. Number them in case there's a slight difference between this one and that one. Get them ready and then I'm going to think about seeing what it looks like when I spray it. Now the next point is what acetate am I going to use. There was some supplies supplied in the kit but it's very very thin. And I think it, it might look better if I actually use some heavier plastic. And what I'm going to use is the old packaging from a model railway or railroad is the guys across the pond call it project from um, the packaging that contains some of the points or the turnouts so I always keep plastic like that if I see it I think it's a bit of a curse of model makers that we store stuff so I'm going to use this and once the templates have been um, cut out and I'm happy with them I'll cut them out of this and then we'll see how it looks so a little bit of time has gone by and as you can see all the templates have now been completed and I have lots of bits of paper all over the place like an origami session gone wrong so they're now cut out and you can see I hope what I mean about it looks rather fetching with an opaque finish but I want it to be at least semi-transparent so I'm going to experiment with uh, spraying some of the acetate very lightly to see if I can get a smoky effect um, and I think that'll look better than a just plain um, crystal clear view because basically all you're looking at is some rather untidy um, radio installation so that's the first stage uh, the templates have now been produced and I'll, I can start cutting out the acetate I'm going to do the front screen first because I might need to push my hands through 
to get to it. And once they're cut out, I'll talk about how I'm going to actually fix them in place. Here we go. I'm going to use the template and what I'm going to do is I'll tape it in position so it doesn't shift around. And I think I'm going to try and cut it out with a pair of scissors actually. We'll try it with this one. See how it goes. If it doesn't work, I can re re um, reuse the knife. So. That curve done. Don't want to cut through the tape just yet. If it's slightly wrong the size, I'm going to use some a nail file, a buffing nail file to sand it to make it a neat fit. So And we can hopefully use the springiness of the acetate to actually keep it nicely in place. So there we go, there's a windscreen, cut out. Let's have a look. Well, that's virtually holding itself in position. Yeah, I think that'll work. There's the acetate window in place. And what I'm going to use to glue it, at least initially, is something called uh, Clear Fix. It's used in a lot of model railwaying or railroading um, applications as it the name implies you get a clear fix when you add it but um, at least for the side windows i'm going to actually put a little balsa button on the inside as well to hold them in place because i think they will be tend to be touched when you're actually picking them up and it's more likely that they'll get pushed in but i think that's going to work there very pleased with that i might even put a fillet of epoxy on the inside do i go with clear Oh, I don't know. I'll get them all cut out first, and then I'll make a decision. So, there we have it. All the glazing has now been cut out, and I think I'm going to leave it clear. My concern with spraying it, I've done this before, is if it's uneven, it looks awful. And I'm not sure how well the paint will adhere to the acetate, and if it comes off at a later date, it'll look a mess. So I'm going to go with the clear. The next stage is going to be to glue it on. And as I say, I'll be using this clear fix. And what I may do, it's just the wing falling over. While we're on it, let's show you the wing. So I can't get it all in, but that's the finish. You can see it looks rather nice. What I'm going to do with the, this is, I'm going to use this clear fix, but I'm going to pack it with foam on the inside to keep it pushed against the frame until it sets. I think that's what I'm going to do. Let's get there. Well, let's start fixing this glazing in. I'll take this one out. I'll do this, these ones first. Now this stuff is rather goopy, so I'm just going to run some along the inside. Look, it's easier to apply with a 
stick I find, although I suppose a brush would work. And as I said before, I'm going to actually put a, a beading around the inside once this is actually stuck on just to add some additional strength. And if it does show through onto the glaze, and if some does run through onto the glaze, it's not a big deal because it is actually literally, as it says on the thing, crystal clear. So I'm going to... I think I might try a brush next time. We'll see. Do it the right way around. And it's as easy as that. It needs a bit of time to go off. I don't know what it actually says on the packaging. I've used it before. Um, doesn't see anything. I think it goes off in about 15, 20 minutes. And the viscosity of the actual crystal clear itself ten tends to pull the acetate to the surface. So I'm going to repeat that on all of the sides on the front. I think I'm actually going to tape it on using this Tamiya tape or Tamiya substitute tape. Leave it and then when it's all set, we peel it off and we'll see what the final thing looks like. Well then, I'm calling this video finished and this build complete boring bolting in the engine all the work that i needed to do was now being completed and it's a case of praying to the weather gods and hopefully this will have a maiden very very soon the last little job i did was i made some collets for the wheels so everything's fixed and ready to go i've been unable to find long enough elastic bands so i'm having to put some together it's not elegant but it'll do for now uh thanks for watching thanks for following this journey i hope you've enjoyed it and it's inspired you to try uh, some building yourself perhaps using some of the materials and methods i've shown it's not the only way to do things it's my way and it's a way that i've pinched from other people anyway so get out there enjoy your flying but please consider doing a little bit of building. It's very, very rewarding. Thanks for watching now. Take care.